All right, today is a crazy day for lens releases. And if you shoot full frame Sony mirrorless, you are not left out because in this video, I am reviewing this Sigma 16 to 28 f 2.8 dgdn contemporary and if you guys recall a couple of months ago i reviewed the 28 to 70 millimeter uh, dgdn contemporary for sony full frame and that was the first lens in the series this being the second and now you have the perfect companion to that lens you have 16 millimeters all the way out to 70 millimeters covered at a constant f2.8 aperture. Really the only thing left is for Sigma to release a telephoto, so a 70 to 200 f2.8, which who knows, maybe they will. Anyway, let's jump into this review by seeing how this thing comes packaged. Okay, so the contemporary line for Sigma is all about packaging. It's about pairing a bright constant f2.8 aperture with a lens body that is compact and light yet sturdy. So it comes in a typical white box, but look at how small it is. Inside there is a user manual and the lens itself. It's very simple. The lens comes with a plastic rear lens cap and a plastic clip-on front lens cap, and there's also also an included plastic lens hood, which is nice. Now onto the lens itself, it's such a well done thing. You can sense it immediately, and I'm not saying that just because I'm a fan of Sigma lenses. Their recent lens releases have been exceptional, and this one is no exception. It weighs 492 grams on my scale, so just about one pound. It is very compact for being an ultra wide f2.8 lens. The feel in the hand and the finishes are great. It's Sigma's thermally stable composite body so it does not feel cheap in the slightest. Starting at the rear, there is a metal mount with electronic connections. This lens has a stepper autofocus system that I'll talk about later. There is a rubber gasket here, so it is dust and splash resistant at the mount, according to Sigma. 022 indicator here means this is a 2022 lens release. Minimum focus distance is 0.25 of a meter or 0.82 feet, and this lens is made in Japan. The first ring here is the zoom ring, and it has a very nice grippy texture to it that you won't confuse with the aperture ring, which has a smoother finish. The zoom ring rotates just about 30 degrees or so, if I had to guess, from 16 millimeters to 28. It's very smooth, very well damped, and linear throughout the zoom range. The best part about it, however, is that the zooming is done completely inside the lens body, so the shape, size, or weight of the lens really doesn't change much whether you are at 16 millimeters or at 28 millimeters. So this is something that gimbal shooters will absolutely love. Up here you have lens specs, a Sigma logo, and a contemporary C logo as well. In between the zoom and the focus rings, there is an autofocus manual focus switch which feels solid and is a nice addition on a lens like this. I like having the ability to quickly switch focus mode without going into the camera settings. The focus ring is up here and it is very nicely done. It has the perfect level of dampening even though it is a completely electronic focus ring that rotates infinitely in either direction. Finally at the very front there is a compact front lens element that is convex with some faint lens specs here as well. Filter thread is 72 millimeters and again this lens is made in Japan. Inside the lens features 16 elements in 11 groups with 5 FLD and 4 aspherical lens elements, a 9 rounded blade diaphragm, and every single lens coming out of the factory is evaluated with Sigma's proprietary MTF measuring system. Mounted on my a7C, this is the camera this lens is designed for. It feels perfectly balanced, well finished, really a joy to carry around and shoot with, and that smooth zoom ring with internal zooming means means that the lens stays this compact no matter the focal length you shoot. Now if you already own the Sigma 28 to 70 millimeter or if you remember my review you'll see the remarkable resemblance between that and this lens. The only difference visually at least is that the 28 to 70 does extend as you zoom in whereas this lens does not. And together this is an appealing combo because of the size, the weight, and the price which I'll mention at the end. Now I have this lens mounted on my a7C and mounted on my Crane M3 and surprisingly this balances and the gimbal does support this lens and this camera because it's just a lightweight and compact setup. Let's take a look at some sample photos. All of these are straight out of the camera unedited from my a7C. Ready, set, go.
I think that Sigma has reached a point where they no longer produce a bad lens. Uh, especially over the last two, three years, I think everything that they have released has been just amazingly good. Uh, whether that is a prime lens for APS-C or a zoom lens for full frame or an art lens, just everything that they are putting out optically and from a build quality standpoint and from a price value standpoint is just unbeatable. That's why I've become such a fan of Sigma lenses. And I've been a Sigma fan for a long, long time, but their new stuff is just keeps getting better and better and better, I think. Okay, let's get back to the 16 to 28. Optically, it is excellent. Nice and sharp in the center and in the corners, flat focusing through the frame, punchy colors and contrast and minimal distortion. Now, this isn't something that's easy with an f2.8 ultra wide angle lens that zooms. Most of them have compromises such as flare, vignetting, distortion, and chromatic aberrations. But with Sigma, they have focused on reducing lateral and vertical chromatic aberrations through the use of five FLD glass elements. They've focused on reducing lens flare and ghosting by using their super multi-layer coating. So even when you shoot into hard backlit situations, you get contrast and nice colors. And they've also attacked this from the digital side by pairing this with lens aberration corrections in the camera. That being said, are there still lens flares? Yes, as you can see here in some examples. And is there chromatic aberration? Yeah, a little bit, but almost no, there's very little of it. Optically, with the in-body lens corrections enabled, you get images that are superb, highly detailed, vibrant, sharp, with plenty of smooth bokeh when close to a subject. For an ultra-wide angle lens, the bokeh is very well rendered, not distracting and smooth. If you want to get an idea of sharpness, here it is next to the Sigma 20 millimeter F2, which is a crazy sharp prime full frame lens from Sigma. And these results are nuts. Sure, the prime may be a touch sharper in this corner, but you are getting about 95%, I would say, of the prime's performance out of a zoom lens at F2.8 wide open. And at $200 more than the Prime, I think it represents a crazy value as well. In terms of autofocus, this lens was fast, near silent, and very accurate. Even though it's using a stepper motor instead of the more modern linear motors that are coming out, I really didn't find that it was slow whatsoever. And this lens does support high speed autofocus, which is a good thing. For video work, it was very smooth in transitions from one focus point to another, so that's a good thing as well. It's one of those lenses that you can easily give to your grandmother, and as long as she can push the shutter button, every single shot will come out sharp and in focus. This lens does excel on a gimbal. It's nice and small, easy to balance, and easy to adjust from 16 to 28 millimeter on the fly without upsetting the gimbal's balance. I had this out earlier, but I'll show you guys again. Here it is on the gimbal. And just to give you an idea of the balance because of the internal zooming. So here it is with the axis unlocked at 16 millimeters. So that's where it sits and all the way to 28. And you could see it dropped down a little bit, but barely anything. So back to 16, 28. I mean, it's very, very balanced for internal zooming. So. The gimbal really, whether you're shooting at 16 or 28, you don't need to rebalance anything. You don't need to readjust anything. It's such a light lens um, and it's awesome that you can put it on a tiny gimbal such as this one. I think this lens is going to be very popular, particularly among the content creator crowd, people making vlogs because it's perfect for that sort of thing. It's great for low light work at f2.8. It's super wide, so you don't need long arms to get everything in the frame. It focuses well, produces sharp results. It's portable and light, and it gives you very usable wide focal lengths. This is the new 10 to 18 millimeter for full frame Sony shooters. And there's not many compromises with this lens either. Now, sure, it's not as wide as the Sigma 14 to 24 millimeter DGD and Art. However, that lens is approximately 30 millimeters longer and almost double the weight at 795 grams. If you want something smaller and lighter, this new 16 to 28 is the answer. And to top it off, this lens is a whopping $500 cheaper coming in at a US 899 here at launch. So it's a pretty dang good value. Now I'm not knocking the art lens at all. In fact, I'd love to have the 14 to 24 in my collection so that I could compare this lens with that one. But unfortunately, I don't have one. 
But I will say that after using this lens for a period of about two weeks, uh, there's really nothing else I could ask for. This can easily be a real estate lens, a travel lens, a vlogging lens, a landscape lens. Uh, really, you can do a whole bunch with this thing. Um, and so do I recommend it? Absolutely. So definitely check this out if you are interested. Uh, I'll post some links down below. You can read specs and you could check out pricing. I'm not sure if they finalize pricing, but I think it's $8.99. Um, and so, yeah, it's a great little buy and I'm seriously tempted to sell off a bunch of my ultra wide full frame lenses and get this thing. Um, but anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you to Sigma for sending this lens out to me for review pre-release. I unfortunately have to send this back tomorrow, so uh, I won't be able to use it anymore, which is a sad thing. If you aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.